Hey guys, this is Martin. Welcome back for our third week of our family Bible study at North Grand Christian Church. We're going to be finishing up the first chapter in John today, and that'll be kind of where we leave off. We'll start on chapter 2 next week. So we're going to learn about the first four people who follow Jesus. Let me read verses 35 through 42 first. It says, The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that time with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. So there's a couple of things that go on through here. John is out baptizing people again, and he's got some students with him today. And he sees Jesus, and he shouts, Look, the Lamb of God, to try and direct attention at him again. And two of his disciples heard him, and they followed Jesus. So I'm going to underline that so we know that's important. So Jesus, as he's walking on the road, saw them, and he turns around and he says, What do you guys want? And they asked him, where are you staying? They want to know that Jesus is staying somewhere nice because he is important to God. They know that the Lamb of God is important to God. So Jesus says, come and you will see. And this is actually him inviting them to come with so that he can talk with them about God and about questions they have in their faith. So I'm going to underline that as well. There we go. So they went and they saw where he was staying and they spent the day with him. And they were talking about God and answering questions that they had. So after this, Andrew, who has a brother that we're going to call Simon Peter later on, he's just Simon, was one of the two. And when he had followed Jesus, he talked with him about all of these things and he's convinced that Jesus is the Messiah now. And he runs to his brother Simon and he tells him, we have found the Messiah. And he brings him to Jesus. And Jesus looks at him and says, you are Simon, son of John. This would have been like if you met someone for the first time and you called them by their full name, their first and last names. And he says, you are going to be called Cephas. This is going to be very important. Because whenever someone gets their name changed, it means they're going to do something really important for God's kingdom. We see Abram who becomes Abraham, and eventually it's the father of Israel. Sarai becomes Sarah. She is the mother of Israel. Jacob becomes Israel and starts the nation out with his family. And then the last person is Simon, who becomes Cephas, or Peter, which means rock. And we're going to learn throughout the gospel why it's important that he is who he is. So, let me read verses 43 through 51 now. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, but you will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So a couple of things happen through this. First of all, we learn that Jesus is starting to get popular because he's traveling and he finds Philip and just tells him to follow him, and he does. But Philip is 
from the same place as Peter and Andrew, so they kind of know each other. But Philip won't follow him first. He needs to go tell his friend Nathaniel about him. So he goes and he tells him that we found the one Moses wrote about and the one who the prophets wrote about. He's talking about the one fulfilling the prophecies and all of these. And he says that this person is Jesus, son of Nazareth, or from Nazareth, the son of Joseph. This is like calling someone by their first, middle, and last name. There is no way to confuse them at this point. So, Nathaniel says, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? And Philip invites him to come and see, just like Jesus did to uh, Andrew. But Nathaniel is questioning it. So, when he comes up to Jesus... Jesus says, here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. He says, you're a truthful man, Nathaniel. And Nathaniel says, I don't know you. How do you know me? And Jesus answers and says, I saw you while you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. So when people go under a fig tree in this uh, time, it's usually because a fig tree is a sign of peace. They want to be somewhere where... They won't be disturbed so that they can pray, they can read scripture, they can try and uh, learn. So because of this, Nathaniel is probably hanging out under this fig tree, reading scriptures about who the Messiah is going to be and praying for him to come soon so that they could be delivered from Rome because Rome is not very great. So Philip comes up to him and tells him we found him we found him and he says i don't believe this and he comes up and when jesus says that he saw him he all of a sudden is convinced because that tree is probably not somewhere he can actually see so nathaniel is convinced that he had to see him another way and that's how he came to the conclusion that jesus was the son of god he says you are the son of god and the king of israel this is his confession before he follows Jesus. And Jesus says, You believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree, but you're going to see greater things than that. And then he gives an example. He says, You will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. He's talking about his ascension into heaven after he's resurrected. So, in light of that, there's a couple of things that we learn. First, God is everywhere and he sees everything, right? Jesus saw Nathaniel before he could physically see him. Next, it teaches us that when we find Jesus, when we meet him for the first time, we should be so excited that we should tell everybody, right? That's what these people did. Then we learn about the first four people who follow Jesus because they're going to be pretty crazy. They're going to be awesome. They do amazing things the rest of their lives because of this. So here's a couple of questions for you guys to talk about. The first four people that Jesus called to follow him were just normal people. There was nothing special about him. How can that encourage you to be... Uh, how can that encourage you in your walk with Jesus? Especially knowing all of the crazy things that Peter does. He wrote a book out of the Bible. He wrote two of them, actually. And he ended up planting churches in Russia. Next question. Why is it important that Nathaniel recognized Jesus as God? You really want to hone in on how does Jesus' message change if he wasn't God? What if he was just a good person? And lastly... Andrew followed Jesus to his house. When they did, they must have talked about God. He probably asked Jesus a lot of questions about God. Do you have somebody that you can ask those questions to? Because you'll have them at some point. And if you do, what kinds of questions have you asked already? Okay, on that note, I want to go ahead and pray before we go. Lord God, thank you so much for the families that are doing this, for the people that are doing this. I pray that you would be with us and it would encourage us so that we can uh, learn more about you and so that we can just be so excited like Andrew and like Philip, God. It's all these things that we pray in your son's name. Amen.